Hey everyone, welcome back to another Hardware News Recap for the week. This week, mostly talking about Eclipsium, finding some major vulnerabilities in basically every major driver and BIOS out there. Assetto Corsa no longer prioritizing RTX to the point where it's not even clear if it'll make it into the game anymore. And AMD updating product pages, AMD reference card update, uh, Ryzen 3000 bidding stats, and then some thread for rumors for this week's news recap. Before that, this video is brought to you by Be Quiet and its Straight Power 11 series power supplies. The Straight Power 11 PSUs ship from 450 watts up to 1000 watts, accommodating most of the gaming PC build requirements you'd encounter, and focuses on delivering a higher quality power supply that doesn't sacrifice on efficiency or stability. Noise is also a heavy point for the Straight Power 11, using a 135mm Silent Wings 3 fan that can spin as low as 200 RPM for quieter, low load operation. Learn more at the link in the description below. So the first one is the Eclipsium story, and this is pretty interesting. Researchers at Eclipsium, which is a white hat firm, have revealed that they've identified a vulnerability in more than 40 different driver packages. They also note that this is coming from 20 different vendors. So it's not just one who's released 40 drivers. And according to Eclipsium, among the affected vendors are every major BIOS manufacturer or vendor, as well as hardware vendors like NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel. Eclipsium said the following in its post, quote, our analysis found that the problem of insecure drivers is widespread, affecting more than 40 drivers from at least 20 different vendors, including every major BIOS vendor, as well as hardware vendors like Asus, Toshiba, Nvidia, and Huawei. However, the widespread nature of these vulnerabilities highlights a more fundamental issue. All the vulnerable drivers we have discovered have been certified by Microsoft. Since the presence of a vulnerable driver on a device can provide a user or attacker with improperly elevated privileges, we have engaged Microsoft to support solutions to better protect against this class of vulnerabilities, such as blacklisting known bad drivers. In its report on this, Eclipsium noted that the bad drivers act as a proxy to provide elevated privileges, and it goes anywhere from ring 3 to ring 0, which brings you all the way down potentially to a kernel level access, which would allow access to hardware and firmware interfaces, both bad things to have access to. So what's worse here is that the insecure drivers, again, bear the authentic certificates from Microsoft, and so these include Wickle drivers, for example, or WHQL, you might know it as. Eclipsium also noted that this issue affects all modern versions of Windows, including Windows 10, and that there is currently, quote, no universal mechanism to keep a Windows machine from loading one of these bad drivers. So uh, there's nothing you can really do too much about it right now other than keep an eye on the story. It'll be interesting as it develops. They didn't really go into detail on if there are any widespread uh, attacks that are currently leveraging these potential vectors, which is typically the case is it, it gets revealed privately first, probably to Microsoft, and then uh, public release later, hopefully after some fixes have been implemented or at least uh, begun to be worked on. Next one, Assetto Corsa no longer prioritizing RTX, which saddens us because when NVIDIA got on stage originally in October of last year to do its tech day for editors about RTX, one of the things that NVIDIA did was parade developers across the stage to more or less say, hey, this RTX thing, it's real and people are supporting it. And one of those developers represented through an NVIDIA employee was Assetto Corsa. So this is a game where we actually, we bought it before RTX came out because we thought we thought it would have RTX. So like before the cards came out, we bought a set of Corsa, we bought a couple other games, thinking they'd have RTX support so we could test it for the review. As you all likely know, there were no RTX games at launch, so that never materialized as anything. And we kept the game in our library thinking, well, it'll be a good feature test someday for just a one-off video on the game. But what's happening now is there's no, no more any concrete confirmation that Assetto Corso is uh, receiving RTX support. And this is something that was posted on the forum. So the quote from one of the developers on the forum, as cross-posted to the Steam forums by the user who started the thread, was, quote, our priority is to improve, optimize, and evolve all aspects of ACC. If after our long list of priorities, the level of optimization of the title and the maturity of the technology permits a full-blown implementation of RTX, we will gladly explore the possibility. But as of now, there is no reason to steal development resources and time for a very low frame rate implementation 
of RTX. So that's where they stand on RTX implementation right now. Kind of sad to hear because, again, we did, we did buy the game hoping that it'd be a good title to potentially showcase RTX features. Cars tend to go well with that type of, uh, of graphics technology. So it would have been a good one, but we'll, we'll see if it ever happens. It sounds like it's nowhere near the priorities list. And uh, performance is a concern, as you would expect. So anyway, uh, a lot of that tech day was games showing off RTX technologies, many of which haven't come out yet, haven't implemented the RTX execution yet. Uh, and so we're, we're still kind of waiting on some of those. AMD product page updates first up. So earlier this week, AMD quietly updated its product pages for Ryzen processors to elaborate and perhaps clarify what the company meant by, quote, max boost clock. This is something we've detailed kind of heavily. We talked about also Precision Boost 2 and Precision Boost Overdrive a lot in a 37-minute long deep dive on those topics. AMD has further clarified what those things mean as well. But uh, to, to kind of reiterate what AMD has said and what we've said, max boost clock, as has been the case for a very long time, as long uh, several years at this point at least, is referring to the max single core boosting frequency. Now, that said, AMD has also basically lied about its its maximum frequencies in some ways. One of those was in the video where AMD described what its Precision Boost Overdrive and Auto OC technologies do, where AMD said something to the effect of the CPUs potentially being capable of doing like 4750 megahertz, which doesn't happen with those things. Or, no, it just doesn't happen actually. So. Uh, yeah, AMD has further clarified what it means by max boost clock. And again, part of this is users and consumers were confused in a way that they, they really shouldn't have been. Uh, people were trying to find something to be outraged about in one respect, which was all cores never hit 4.6, which, uh, yeah, that's never really been the case for a max boost frequency, at least not for several years. And it's the same on Intel. It's not an all core frequency. Now, separately, people did absolutely have right to be annoyed, in the very least, that AMD more or less lied about hitting some of its frequencies. So again, 4750, not really a thing that happens. So there may be instances, perhaps the better word would be strongly misled rather than lied, but there may be one-off instances where for a millisecond you hit that frequency with those settings with a specific board with a specific application and type of workload, okay. In that instance, from probably a legal standpoint, it's not objectively false, but from a practical uh, or pragmatic standpoint, it may as well be. Um, so anyway, AMD has clarified what it means by max boost clock, and it updated the pages to say, quote, max boost clock is the maximum single core frequency at which the processor is capable of operating under nominal conditions. And uh, then additional details posted again on PBO and PB2. So in other news, the company swiftly put to rest a rumor that ran rampant earlier this week, and that was about the AMD reference cards going EOL already. The rumor claimed that the RX 5700 series was being retired, at least the, the reference models, were being retired after only about a month on the market. And uh, in statements to PC World and Tom's Hardware, AMD addressed this rumor and uh, the future of the reference models by saying the following, quote, we expect there will continue to be strong supply of Radeon RX 5700 series graphics card in the market with multiple designs starting to arrive from our AIB partners. As a standard practice, once the inventory of the AMD reference cards has been sold, AMD will continue to support new partner designs with Radeon RX 5700 series reference design kits. So this is, it's partly a PR answer and partly a real answer, which is that uh, yeah, of course, there's going to be partner models coming out. We've already seen them. We've reviewed one of them, and we have more coming in. And then separately, AMD does sell the bits and pieces of its reference design to partners, so they can buy just the PCB. They can buy the whole thing. If they want the cooler as well, want to stick their logo on the fan, just with a literal sticker on the fan, they can still do that. So you might still see reference designs. Reference PCBs you'll definitely see. Uh, some of the partner models should have reference PCBs, and that's a good thing because even though the, the blower cooler obviously deserves the flack that it gets, the reference PCB 
is useful for water cooling and for mods in general, but water cooling especially because some of the blocks have been made for that one. So uh, all this means is that AMD is allowing AIB cards to take over the market, which is more or less normal. Reference models will still be available through AMD for now or through the partners who decide to buy that kit and sell it in their own box, like MSI, Sapphire, pretty much everyone's got them right now on Newegg. And, uh, and then we'll talk more about and these reference designs in a separate piece later. So Ryzen 3000 bidding statistics also up. Silicon Lottery released some interesting stats on its uh, deep research on the Ryzen 3000 series and how the processors are performing in terms of overclocking and frequencies and voltages for stable overclocks. These numbers provide some meaningful insight for those looking to play the Silicon Lottery or bypass it and buy through Silicon Lottery, the website, and see what percentage of chips can hit the highest frequencies and where they fall on the volt frequency curve. As expected, Ryzen 3000 binning is a bit underwhelming, which isn't altogether bad, depending on your perspective. The highest stable frequency achieved for Ryzen 9 3900X was 4.20 GHz at 1.25 volts, and only the top 6% of chips were able to hit that mark. Stepping down to the R7 models, the top 20% of 3800X models managed a 4.30 GHz overclock at 1.30 volts, while the top 21% of Ryzen 7 3700X chips hit 4.15 gigahertz at 1.262 volts. And a big difference here obviously is that Silicon Lottery is going for actual stable 24 seven use numbers, whereas in our reviews, we're typically going for get the review done, which means we push voltage a lot higher than we'd recommend for daily use uh, to do that. So if you're trying to play the Silicon Lottery, don't be upset if you get a chip that doesn't clock very high because it sounds like there aren't many of them that do the types of numbers you can achieve with high voltages uh, with a, a stable 24-7 voltage. To no one's surprise, really. And then finally, a rumor on Threadripper. And this is the uh, Ryzen 3000 series update for Threadripper. That's been rumored for a while now. It was rumored as dead. Rumors of its de <laughs> demise were apparently greatly exaggerated because with Ryzen 3000 and Epic 7002 series officially outed, the next big CPU launch boasting AMD Zen 2 architecture is Threadripper, other than the 3950X later. Recent rumors speculate that both Intel and AMD could be heading for an HEDT showdown in October, as both chip makers are rumored to be prepping launches. So now there's a chip with the code name Shark's Tooth that has shown up on Geekbench, and it's a 32-core, 64-thread part, allegedly, we have to say it is rumor status right now, that's presumed to belong to the Zen 2 Threadripper family. The specs match. The chip comes with a configuration similar to the 2990WX, except it has higher clock speeds at 3.6 gigahertz, no mention of boost speeds, and there are currently two shark's tooth entries in that database. One of the entries has a single core score of 5932 and a multi core score of 93344. The other entry shows a single core score of 5677 and a multi core score of 94772. Either way you do the math, those scores beat the previous threader for 2990WX handily. As with Ryzen 3000 and Epic 7002, it's expected that threader for 3000 will obviously support PCIe 4.0 and will likely come with a uh, a new chipset. Now, what we're not sure about presently is the socket. So that'll be the big question mark. Uh, will you need to update motherboards? Because if there's a memory channel change, that might throw a few things off. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, again, socket type. AMD promised AM4 would survive for a long time. And feel free to let me know in the comments. But we couldn't recall if AMD promised a a specific lifespan for TR4. So let us know if they did. But anyway, that's what's to, to keep an eye out for. Eclipsium is probably the biggest item to look for development on over the next week or so. Thanks for watching. As always, subscribe for more. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one, one of our toolkits, or one of our large mod mats, medium mod mats also there, or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.